Here at Tormach, we want to help you get making parts faster. So here's how to install the automatic tool changer for your PCNC 440. Please read the technical documentation that came with your product for all the warnings and cautions and any minor changes in future releases. When you receive your ATC, compare the contents to the item list in the included technical document. If any of these items are missing, contact Tormach Customer Service at support at tormach.com. You will need several tools to complete the ATC installation. A 1-2-3 block set. A half inch straight dowel no longer than 8 inches. A half inch TTS tool holder. A 3 mm and a 4 mm hex wrench. Two adjustable wrenches. A socket wrench with a 13 mm socket. A Phillips screwdriver. A small flathead screwdriver. A pair of snips. And finally, a PCNC 440 power drawbar. The power drawbar must be installed on your machine before installing the PCNC 440 ATC. Check out the link in the description for the full details on how to install the power drawbar. Air requirements. The air supply must meet the required operating range between 90 and 120 PSI. If the air supply exceeds 120 PSI, you must use a regulator. You must lubricate the air with air tool oil. Use a filter regulator lubricator or something similar for this process. Partial disassembly of the mill enclosure. There are several items that need to be removed on the PCNC 440 before installing the ATC. From the PathPilot main tab, reference the mill by clicking on the Ref Z, Ref X, and Ref Y buttons. Slowly jog the Z axis down about one and a half inches. Power off the mill by pushing the E stop button. Click Exit on PathPilot then click OK to power off. Turn the PathPilot controller power strip off. Turn the main disconnect to off. Power off the air compressor and disconnect all air lines from the power drawbar button. Remove the Phillips head screws from the button box assembly and discard the assembly. Unscrew the push button cap and discard the power drawbar button assembly. Remove the Phillips head screws on the button box base and discard the base. Reinstall the top socket head cap screw. If your mill is installed with a full enclosure, you must partially disassemble the enclosure before installing the ATC. Remove the nine Phillips head screws securing the enclosure's left back panel to the machine column, the top panel, and to the left side panel. Set the screws aside and place the back panel in a safe spot. Remove the top window by loosening the nine screws securing the three gibs to the enclosure's top panel. The window will slide out of place. Set the window aside. Use a 3 mm hex wrench to remove the 10 socket head cap screws securing the electrical cabinet cover. Then remove the 8 4 mm button head cap screws securing the Z column to the back of the mill. Set both of these panels aside. Mount automatic tool changer. Four standoffs are used to mount the ATC to the Z column. They need to be installed in a certain order for proper adjustment. Two are adjustable, one is fixed, and the fourth is a tilt standoff. The main body of this one is slightly longer than the main bodies of the two adjustable standoffs. Arrange the four standoffs next to each other. Adjust the nuts until each adjustable standoff is equal in length to the fixed standoff. Place a washer between each standoff and the side of the mill. Install the tilt standoff in the top left screw hole and then secure into place with a wrench. Secure an adjustable standoff to the right of the tilt standoff and to the second adjustable standoff just below. And finally, secure the fixed standoff in the bottom left location. Tighten each in place with an adjustable wrench. Remove the flange nuts and washers from each standoff and set them aside. From the rear of the motor enclosure, remove the four 6mm screws securing the access plate. Cut the large cable ties securing the ATC wires, but leave the yellow and white wires tied together. Temporarily rest the ATC on the tray. Pull the USB cable through the Z column access slot, followed by the rest of the bundle.
Evan Assistant rests the ATC on the standoff bolts as you pull the cables through the access slot. While they hold the ATC in place, reinstall the washer and flange nut on each standoff. They can be left finger tight. Make air connections. Slide the tool tray manually toward the spindle. On the bottom solenoid, use a flathead screwdriver to push in the screw and turn it clockwise. The screw locks in place and holds the ATC in the tray load position. Identify the two 5/32 of an inch nylon air lines connected to the power drawbar cylinder. The bottom air line is for the retract and the top is for the advance. Connect the bottom air line to the ATC's left top push to connect elbow and then connect the top air line to the right push to connect elbow. Identify the quarter inch plastic tube connected to the air compressor. Connect the loose end to the air in valve below the motor enclosure. At this point, you can install the optional ATC pressure sensor and or the optional filter regulator lubricator. Follow the installation instructions that are included with each product. You can now power on the air compressor. Level the automatic tool changer. Make sure the ATC's carousel door opening is approximately equal in distance on both sides of the spindle. If it is not, Use an adjustable wrench to loosen or tighten the nut on both adjustable standoffs and bring the motor enclosure approximately 1 8 of an inch from the mill's spindle head. Use an adjustable wrench to turn the tilt standoff until all sides of the motor enclosure are approximately parallel with the mill's spindle head. Securely tighten the four flange nuts on each standoff. Tighten the plastic wire plug against the mill's Z column. Use a screwdriver to turn the bottom solenoid counterclockwise. The tool tray will retract, making the electrical connections. The V plus and V minus or red and black power wires connect to the bottom of the power supply. Lift the clear plastic cover and use a screwdriver to secure the V plus wire to the V plus terminal and the V minus wire to the V minus terminal. Feed the VFD1 and the VFD8 spindle wires through the access hole. Remove the three wire trough covers from the electrical cabinet. Seat the wires into the troughs and up towards the variable frequency drive. Use a small flathead screwdriver to secure the VFD8 wire to pin 8. The VFD1 wire shares a slot with another wire in pin 1. Loosen the first wire and then add the VFD1 wire to the pin 1 slot. Secure both wires. Replace the wire trough covers. Reinstall the electrical cabinet cover. Feed the USB cable through the Z column access hole and then into the stand access hole. Insert the USB cable into any USB slot on the controller. Reinstall the Z column cover and then the motor enclosure access plate. Validate the installation. Power on the mill by turning on the PathPilot controller. After the software loads, turn the main disconnect to on. Turn the e-stop button clockwise to release. Press the start button. Click reset on the screen. Go to the settings tab on PathPilot, select the ATC button and the ATC tab will appear. Go to the main tab and reference the mill by clicking RefZ, RefX and RefY. Push and hold the ATC button to open the collet. Insert a tool into the spindle. Release the button to close the spindle. Type 1000 into the RPM DRO. Click forward and the spindle starts. In the status tab, make sure that the VFD running green light comes on. Click stop to stop the spindle. If the VFD running light did not come on, then remove the tool from the spindle, perform the power off procedure, and then repeat the electrical connection steps. Align tool tray and tool slots. Before adding any tools to the spindle, the tool tray needs to be aligned. Make sure there are no tools in the spindle. Click Ref Tool Tray and the tool tray will spin. Click Go to Tool Tray Load Position. The prompt will ask if the spindle is empty. Click OK and the tray will move forward. Adjusting the tool tray load position. If the spindle is not in the center of the ATC's carousel door opening, Loosen the jam nut on the ATC linear rail. Slide the coupler to bring the ATC assembly closer or further away from the spindle head. Once the ATC carousel's door opening is positioned correctly with the spindle, retighten the jam nut.
adjusting the tilt of the ATC. Insert the tool holder with the half inch steel dowel into the fork and make sure the groove in the tool holder slides along the shoulder of the fork. Type 1 in the tool number DRO. Click Insert. The tool number entered appears on the diagram of the ATC's carousel. Place a 123 block on the machine table and slide it next to but not touching the dowel. Make sure the dowel is parallel with the 123 block in both the Y direction and the X direction. If the dowel is not parallel with the straight edge, loosen the two 5mm socket head cap screws on the ATC's linear rail and slowly pivot the ATC assembly until the dowel is parallel with the 123 block. Then retighten the socket head cap screws. Recheck the alignment of the dowel in both the Y and X direction. Use an adjustable wrench to turn the tilt standoff nut and slowly pivot the ATC assembly until the dowel is parallel with the 123 block. Adjusting the tool tray rotation. Slowly jog the Z-axis tool tray down to bring the spindle nose towards the tool. Determine if the tray must move clockwise or counterclockwise. Click minus minus to step the tool tray counterclockwise. Then click plus plus to step the tool tray clockwise until the spindles and tool slots center lines align with each other. Slowly jog the Z-axis down over the tool shank. Make sure the shank moves freely in the collet. If it does not, this indicates that the ATC is misaligned and you must repeat the steps in the aligned tool tray and tool slots section. Setting the tool change height. Slowly jog the Z-axis down over the tool. Stop jogging when the spindle nose just makes contact with the shoulder of the tool holder. Click the Set TC POS button and then click OK to set the tool change position. Adjusting the rotational play. There is a small amount of rotational play built into the ATC carousel. This allows for some misalignment during tool changes and must be adjusted in both directions. The taper on the tool shank also helps align the tool during a tool change. In the ATC tab, click the Tray Forward button to rotate the tray clockwise one full tool slot. Then click Tray Reverse to rotate it back one full tool slot. Make sure the tool's shank is in line with the collet in the spindle. If it doesn't line up, then go back to the Align Tool, Tray, and Tool Slots section and repeat those procedures. Reassemble the enclosure. From the enclosure's back panel, remove the ATC cover. Slide the top window back into the Gibbs slot and retighten the screws. Reinstall the enclosure's back panel to the machine column and side panel. This concludes the installation of the PCNC 440 ATC. The technical document continues with operation and maintenance procedures, and it's suggested that you read this before operating your ATC. Thanks for watching. Check out all of our latest videos here, and for more metalworking tips, tricks, and stories, subscribe to the YouTube channel.